Hello there, this video will cover setting up shortcut keys and using those shortcut keys to split the screen in the LXDE desktop. If you're interested in Linux on an Android, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on an Android without rooting. To fix the shortcut keys from a terminal, we first need to copy the openbox XML config file into the .config folder. To do this, we will first execute cd space tilde slash dot config to change the directory to the dot config folder. From here, we can do mkdir space openbox to create a folder called openbox. After that, we can do cd space openbox to navigate into the openbox folder we just created. Next, we can do cp space slash etc slash xdg slash openbox slash rc dot xml space dot slash. This will copy the openbox xml config file into the current directory we are in. Next, we can do cp space rc dot xml space rc dot bak. This will create a backup copy of the rc.xml file before we edit it later in the video so that way we have something to go back to in case we need it. Now we can edit the goel script so that openbox will load the config file that we copied over. To do that, we will first do cp space slash usr slash bin slash goel space slash usr slash bin slash goel dot bak. This will create a backup copy of our working script before we edit it, so again, we have something to go back to. Then we can do nano space slash usr slash bin slash goel to edit the goel script. And on the first line, after openbox dash lxde, we will add in space dash dash config dash file space tilde slash dot config slash openbox slash rc dot xml. So now, Openbox will know where the config file is. When we are done editing the script, we can do Control O, Enter, and Control X to save the file, and then we will need to close out of the terminal and reboot Linux like usual by disconnecting, stopping the session, starting the session back up, and then start up the desktop. Now we can create custom keyboard shortcuts by going to the menu, and in the Preferences section, we can click on Setup Hotkeys. From here, we can create a shortcut to launch an application, such as launching LX Terminal with Control alt t To do that, we need to go to the Programs tab, click on the Create New Action button, which is the button with a white box and star in it, and then click the square under Hotkey 1 and do Control alt t on the keyboard. Then under command line, enter in the name of the program you'd use to launch the program from a terminal, which for this example is LX Terminal. After that, click on the Accept Changes button, which is the button with a check mark in it, and then click on the Save button with a red arrow in it to apply the changes. Now when we do Control alt t on the keyboard, LX Terminal will open. We can also create a shortcut to perform an action, such as moving a window with Alt F7. We can do that by going to the Actions tab, click the Create New Action button, and then click the box under Hotkey 1 and do Alt F7 on the keyboard. Once we've done that, we can click the Add an Action button, which is the button with a white box and star in it, and then in the Name dropdown, select Move. After that, we can click the Apply button, and then click the Accept New Changes button, and finally, click the Save button to apply the changes. Now pressing Alt F7 will let us move a window with the mouse. Additionally, we can edit the Openbox XML config file to create keyboard shortcuts for split-screening windows vertically or horizontally. Split-screening can be particularly useful when multitasking. We can do this by going into the .config folder, and then go into the Openbox folder, and open the rc.xml file with mousepad. After that, I'm going to go to my YouTube channel to get the XML split screen code by going into the Linux on Android without running playlist, and I'm going to click on the first video. The pinned comment in the first video will contain any core scripts and such that can be copied and pasted. For this case, I'm copying the XML code for split screening. The split screen XML code will also be in the pinned comment for this video. After copying the XML code, we can go back to a mousepad and do Control F and type in F7 to find the move shortcut that we made earlier. 
From there, we can paste the XML code one line before the keyboard end tag. What we copied over are four keyboard shortcuts, which are called keybinds in this case. And for the first one, S means shift, so the keyboard shortcut is shift end. And what it does is it unmaximizes the window, resizes the width to be 50% of the screen, and then it maximizes the height of the window to be the height of the screen, and then it moves the window to the right. I recommend copying and pasting the XML code because it is difficult to troubleshoot. However, if you do key it in by hand, then I recommend typing the first keybind for the first keyboard shortcut, get that to work, and then copy and paste that keybind for the rest of the keyboard shortcuts and edit the rest from there. When we are done editing the file, we can save the file, close out of mousepad and out of anything else that is open as well, and reboot Linux by stopping and starting the session like usual. Now when we have a window open and press shift end, it will resize and move the window to take up the right half of the screen. Shift home will do the same thing except the window will take up the left half of the screen. Shift page up will make a window take up the top half of the screen. And shift page down will make the window take the bottom half of the screen. Some additional tips that can help with a workflow are right-clicking on a window border and set the window to always be on top so even if we interact with another window behind it, that window will stay in front. We can also quickly move between virtual desktops by doing Ctrl, Alt, and then pressing on the left or right arrow keys. And finally, with a window that is active, we can send that window to another desktop by doing Shift, Alt, and then pressing on the left or right arrow keys. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, Linux on Android phones and tablets. And other than that, see you soon!